Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, My Kinda Art. With me, Ivan Florentino. For today's video, I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to draw a face and a head at three-fourths of an angle using pencil. And because I like to teach through pop culture, we are drawing Rihanna. And this is just a drawing in my sketchbook. And it's also one of my lessons that I have in my brand new Skillshare class. And just as a quick reminder, I love teaching through pop culture. And don't forget that I do have a Skillshare class that's already published and it's ready to be viewed. Just go to Skillshare.com and I have all the links in the descriptions below. And this is just a small snippet of the things that I teach through pop culture. And this is just one of the lessons that I like to do using erasers, brushes, and stumps. So go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much. Alright, so for the tools, we'll need our kneaded eraser and our plastic Mars eraser and even a pencil eraser, our drafting pencil, and I have a number two pencil here on this pencil holder because it is kind of short and I want to use it all the way up to when I can't use it anymore. Our blending stumps, two sizes, and our blending brush. Now you can use any size sketchbooks that you have. I have several here or you can just draw on regular size paper. And remember, these are just exercises, so any size will do. So to begin, get your reference photo ready and place it wherever you like. And we're gonna begin by drawing the basic head and get to know our shape of the anatomy. And one tip I wanna stress out through this entire lesson is that in the real world, there are no such thing as lines. Light and shadow create the shapes. We are just going to be revealing it. We are not drawing cartoons, we're going for realism. So for this sketch, we're going to be drawing some thumbnail sketches. And if you don't know what a thumbnail sketch is, it's usually the size of a thumbnail or just any type of small sketch that you can sketch out and get familiar with what we're drawing. But I'm going to do something a little bit bigger and you can choose whatever size you like. I'm going to do one that's around three inches on each side. Like I said, any size will do. And this is just for us to get a feel of what our head is going to look like. For example, we are drawing the three-fourths angle of the head and we're going to learn how to use our tools, get familiar with them, use our brushes, our pencils, and blend everything together. And this is just something that I've always enjoyed doing so that we know what we're working with before we get into our final drawing, which is going to be a lot bigger. So it's easier in this step to make mistakes and get familiar with all of our vocabulary before we begin. So let's start off drawing a circle. And we're going to draw an imaginary line right in the center and divide it into thirds. And this is where our eye line will go, our nose, and our mouth. And these imaginary lines will help us divide the face so that we can easily know where our planes are so that we can eventually add our eyes, eyebrows, nose, and lips. And because we are doing things in freehand, this will help our observational skills by just eyeballing things as we draw. Here's a helpful diagram of the front facing, three fourths view, and a profile view of a head. So now let's focus on the three-fourths view. And as we look at our reference photo, I'm pointing left and right. Let's go back and forth and just attempt to lay those eyes, focusing on one side, which I started on the right, and slowly move our way to the left. And feel free to start adding some details like the eyelashes, pupils, eyebrows, nostrils, and get familiar with not only realism, but freehand and also perspective. Because like I said before, when we learn symmetry in three-fourths view, everything else will become a lot easier to do, especially in our own drawings. We will observe things in the real world and just apply to them, and we will execute them effortlessly in the future. And here's another helpful diagram when it comes to the nose. Here we can see the contour, the hard lines of the bridge, where the highlights might go, the under shadow, just the shadow, and then just the lower sections of the nose. And we can also divide those into shapes like this diagram right here, where the two ball parts of the nose where the nostrils are and the middle section where the cartilage is. It's just another helpful way to break things down and make things a lot easier and simplify the way we approach it. For example, here we can imagine the lips as ovals divided into thirds and then divide it horizontally and then start laying our shadows, middle tones, and leave the white paper as is for highlights. 
and now with the needed eraser I'm erasing our guides because I don't need them but you can keep them on as long as you like and this is also a time to get familiar with your erasers and as you can see the needed eraser is perfect to remove any type of scuffs and also lift up any graphite that you don't need but now I'm deciding to go in and add all the dark shadows, the cast shadows, all of the medium tones in the reference photo. So for example, underneath the nose, the bottom lip, the nostrils, right underneath the eyebrows, and also towards the right of the cheeks, the forehead, and adding layers and layers of graphite so that when we do go into our blending process, which I'll do right now with my paper stumps and tortillins, and also our blending brush, we can learn what shading and blending is all about. For example, you'll notice right here that by adding all of that graphite, we can push and pull and create a soft airbrushed look. And when we want to create realism when drawing portraits, we do need to really define three dimension and this is going to help us do so. We can make things look soft, hard, rounded, I go back in with my graphite, add more and more as I like. And again, we will be working with form. Use your tortillins to round out the areas around the eyes, the nose, and the nostrils. And we're using it just like a pencil. And trust me, with this exercise, you'll get familiar with how things feel and work. So if this is your first time ever even trying these tools, don't get discouraged and don't be afraid. They are easier than what it looks like. And when I tell you, you'll be able to create your first realistic drawing using this course, you'll be so happy you did. Now, for an even softer look, our brush also helps with pushing and pulling, but in a subtle and more softer way. Because remember, light plays around with shadow a lot, especially in our skin tones. And because this is a grayscale version of it, we need a variety to keep things from looking flat and boring. But most importantly, we are creating the illusion of depth and three-dimensionality. And in this final step, you can see that I'm trying out my 5B and you can even try your 6B pencil to really intensify the dark. And look at the big difference compared to when I use my 2B pencil. There's a striking difference with adding harsher, darker graphite. And not only will this help things stand out, it's easier to push and pull those darker colors into the skin tones as well. And this is the perfect time to practice drawing hair, especially the eyelashes and eyebrows, and add those little details that at the end will definitely give it that human female touch, especially for this portrait drawing where you can tell that She's wearing makeup and mascara and it's very defined. And this is another skill to find nuances in portraits. And I know this is the longest video of my entire course, but I decided to put all of this together because I feel like everything just fits perfectly well and it's easier to just dive into this and learn all of our tools, what we're drawing, the vocabulary, so that when we start our final drawing, there won't be any surprises and you're familiar with it from the get-go. 